Looking to maximize your golfing potential? Learn how from one of the world's best golf instructors. Join today at WDGLC.com. Hey there, everybody. It's Wayne DeFrancisco, and you're looking at Rio Ishikawa. So the Sony Open was played this week. Ishikawa's a superstar over there in Hawaii. It's pretty close to Japan. There's a lot of Japanese uh, influence over there in Hawaii. So Ishikawa had a huge gallery and high expectations. He had one of the marquee groupings. He's playing with K.J. Choi, and I think he's playing with Keegan Bradley, maybe, or... Uh, Anyway, but he's struggling. He ended up missing the cut. Uh, he was missing fairways. He was missing greens. He was really struggling. And the announcer, since he was on TV the whole time, they were talking about him a lot. So I wanted to eventually show you what I think is going on with him. But uh, uh, the first thing I wanted to show you was uh, Nick Faldo taking a, taking a stab at... Uh, at what's going on with uh, Rio. If you read the text of this video, I transcribed this little uh, swing analysis by Nick, so uh, let's take a, take a listen here. Playing right back into the breeze, right back in the setting sun also. Yeah. There's one fan that likes it. It's turning a little too quickly to the left though, I believe. Take a look at this swing here, Nick. Zoom in and have a see if we can spot anything today. Frank commented before it's under these shots to stand a little sharp with his feet, and that club face is shut going back. Just a smidgen. Unwinding. And then lifting up. Pelvis line is changing quite a bit. So maybe just losing a little bit of body angle and well quite a contrived you know, a bit of help on the follow through so just those fractional degrees out here and there and you know body angle shaft angle makes a big difference <laughs> so, okay the those body angle shaft angles make a big difference right all right now uh there was some good commentary let's listen to frank Navalo. he uh pretty much hits the nail on the head here, so uh, uh, the camera's just kind of floating around on the fairway, but let's listen to Frank. Maybe just, just rust. Frank, uh, how about the President's Cup for Ishikawa and, and watching him right now? So you, you know a little bit about him, you know him from the clubhouse out, you know, mm -hmm. the, and what makes him go. Uh, what do you see? I think he's a little, his, some of his angles are a little crossed up. He has that tendency every now and again to shut his feet, and then you see he gets a little across the line. And then, you know, you're fighting with it. Then it becomes a, becomes a rhythm, trying to tie it all up at once. All the pressure of the media and the attention to how big a star he is in Japan. All right, so Frank says he's got it crossed. It's crossed up. He's fighting it. And uh, I happen to agree with him. So, so uh, this is a nice swing. We can actually, uh, the cameraman, I don't think it was fixed because it moves at the end, but this was real stable. So we can actually do the... Uh, the Wayne D lines here and uh, check out Rio's swing. Now he's a hell of a player, you know, he's only 20 years old, so it's a pretty good chance that, uh, you know, everybody struggles sometimes, so he'll probably come out of this. It looks like he's working on the right stuff, so let's, uh, let's take a look. Learn the Pivot Compression Golf Swing. Join WDGLC.com today. You can see the camera might have moved just a hair. I'm going to redraw his shaft line here. So one of the one of the things I do to make sure that the camera's not moving around too much is I'll I'll find something stable like if you, uh, this guy's I think that's Bradley's club over here. He's not moving it. So I'll watch the video if the red line stays on the shaft. You can see it'll stay right there until about right here it just starts to... so right in the end if you're thinking about whether or not his hips are staying in the box you can see the camera begins to move a little sideways here. But the rest of it looks just 
looks pretty good. So, so let's take a look. The hands are a little bit low, but that's a common thing among uh, good players. Uh, it's just a comfort thing. I like to see them up by the belly button, which would be maybe uh, you know two, three degrees up. Not a huge deal, but in the end, maybe you know something to something to try because what happens here? You can see the club head just gets fractionally under, but not much. Now, here we have a, a, a perfect example of a pinched right arm, meaning there's no bend in it. So if you look at Hogan's swing, at this point in the swing, his right elbow would be flaring out. And you can see Ishikawa's is almost dead straight. So the right arm being fairly straight now, when the left arm is parallel to the ground, the elbow is not going to make it over to his side like so many players, and it's kind of what I would like to see. But his right arm is really pinched in front of him now. Now, when you do watch, Tiger uh, tends to do the same thing, and uh, Sergio tends to do the same thing, but both of those players from right here have figured out how to keep the shaft on plane. Watch what happens to Ishikawa. So when I draw the plane line up here, you know, the progressions are nice. Got good depth, moves that right leg deep, really good pivot movement there. But with that elbow pinched and almost vertical here, he has sort of dug his shoulder underneath and he's over twisted his right side a little bit with the right arm pinched in front. And now without the left arm rotation, the shaft is now well across the line up here. So you can see it, draw it correctly. So there's the shaft angle. Now, as I said, this guy's a great player, so of course he's gonna shallow the shaft right back on the plane, but when he does that, and, and this is one of the reasons why I favor a right arm action that flares or bends going back and then squeezes in to start the forward swing. Ishikawa's elbow is already squeezed in. Now watch what happens. When he starts down, his elbow tips to more horizontal instead of more vertical. So in other words, here's the forearm angle and when he starts down, it definitely shifted so that the elbow is going behind him a little bit now, since the whole thing is in front of him so much, he's not going to get he's not going to get his arm stuck behind him. But what's going to happen is the right arm is going to jam to try to get back in front of him. So this action is kind of a when you see the elbow go backwards here, it's now going to try to come back in, and when it does, it won't unbend. So look at the approach. So we've got a. You know, for a guy like this, when you watch this swing, he's got a pretty high approach. And instead of using that hitting plane, he drops down and left and releases left as though he was coming more on an arc from the shaft plane. So this is kind of where Nabla was saying he's kind of crossed up here, and I think that Frank is actually right on in his assessment of this. So that cross the line position in a swing like this is going to make square in the face and getting that feel for the arc of the club more difficult. I mean the pivot action lower body movement is excellent. So remember he's in the definitely in the box there and uh, I would say he probably stays in it. The camera moved here a little bit. If you watch the head, classic lower in the back swing, lower again in the forward swing. You know, you see it time and again. I don't even think I have to point it out anymore, but I still will because there are still people that don't think it's a good idea. Now, the other thing that you'll see, and you see it all the time, if you lower, lower, as you go into the ball, the handle's going to go up, the head's going to go up, the pelvis is going to go up, the glutes are going to squeeze, 
So you heard Faldo mention that the belt line was lifting. Right. It does. And, you know, it always does. Well, not always, but you know what I mean. Anyway. So, now, this is where I want to go with what I think is going on here. So, Ishikawa is crossing the line, but watch this rehearsal swing. Now, this rehearsal swing is a little different because he actually stops the club. Now, if you're standing in a mirror and you stop the club, you can probably place it more where you want it than you can when you move. So, what I want to do is I'm going to side by side the same swing because he's going to keep swinging here. And just put a line on the shaft. So, first rehearsal. And now he's going to start staying. He's going to stay in motion a little bit. And he's going to go to the second rehearsal here. So here's the second rehearsal. And he's going to do another one. Now the camera doesn't stay exactly still, but you can see we're just looking at the, the where the shaft is pointing at the top. Here's the, the second one. And if I go back and I show you the, the first one, here's the first one again. So you notice what's happening. As he stays in motion, the club gets more and more crossed. And now, I'll take you to the real swing. And all day long, I have not been able to figure that out. But you certainly don't want to go long there either. Well, if Ishikawa is going to make the cut, he needs to start with a three right here. Went just 130 yards. Pitching wedge. Now remember, this is a pitching wedge. Now check this out. I'm not laughing at Ishikawa. I'm just looking at the difference. I mean, golf's such a it's such a crazy game. I mean, here's one of the most talented guys in the world, right? And if you look at, let's just leave the the first rehearsal line there, and then go to the shot. And I'm going to draw the shaft line on the shot. Check this out. So, this is a case in point. Uh, he's, this is how people struggle. You decide that you don't want to do something in your swing, and you rehearse, rehearse, and then when you swing, you do it anyway. You're not going to hit. You're not going to hit it too good. Because what's happening in your swing is counter to how you're trying to feel the shot out. He's trying to get the club to point left at the top, you know, which is not a radical maneuver, it's just on plane. But because of the mechanics of his backswing, he's not able to do it. Now, as I watch this, that right arm action in combination with that deep pivot movement, what he would need to do to get this club not to cross the line here is right about here he's got to he's got to rotate his left forearm hard he's got to keep his arm against his chest now it's going to make that right arm feel kind of funky if i was teaching the guy i would have him i'd have him flare his arm and the first thing that i would the first thing that i would show him and you're probably know what I'm gonna put up here because I always put the same thing up here watch the right arm and then watch this one so as the club gets a little bit above it's about the same position so here's Hogan's right arm And here's Ishikawa's, watch this. That's a big difference. 
So when Ishikawa's club goes up, instead of planing, it goes right across the line. Now, this this shaft has got to go back this way hard, and that takes a little bit too long. And the hands, because he keeps the shaft up pretty good, doesn't get really behind him, but his hands approach from pretty high up, and then they go down and left. And that is really not the kind of arc that you want to play with, especially when you put produce the speed that Ishikawa does. So again, to fix this up, if he wanted that club to point over there, he would have to rotate his left arm. If he didn't want to do anything else different, but I think he'd be better off trying to get his right arm to do what Hogan's did here. And then, as you see, this is a big difference here, is that you take Hogan's angle here, and when he comes down, the elbow moves in this way, and the arm tips to more vertical, not to more horizontal. Now what that allows him to do is it allows him to bring his hands in more on the shaft plane. And again, you've seen this a million times. It's another reason why I kind of like a semi-high hand position starting off. And Ishikawa's going to come in. not Hogan-esque. Anyway, that's my take on it. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll uh, see you later.